This video is um, example number seven of how we are solving different types of combination problems that involve repeats and we're using ordinary generating functions to solve them. And here the problem is this. We have 200 identical chairs and they are to be distributed in 400, excuse me, four rooms. If each room can receive either 20, 40, 60, 80, or 100 chairs, how many different ways then can we distribute these 200 chairs amongst the four rooms? So again, we're going to approach this problem using a um, ordinary generating function. And we'll probably have to split the video into two parts, which reminds me that if by chance you just found us on YouTube, if you can go to the um, website at digital-university.org, all the videos that we have so far concerning different combination problems and permutations, then the work that we've done so far with generating functions, they're all there at the uh, website, digital-university.org, in their proper sequence. Okay, now for this one, we want to start um, with a generating function that describes the situation for one of the four rooms. And that situation is, in any one room, it might end up with 20, 40, 60, 80, or 100 chairs. So, the appropriate distribution function, not the distribution function, but the generating function is x to the 20th plus x to the 40th plus x to the 60th, and so forth. And we stop at x to the 100. Now, in some of the other problems that we worked with, when we were setting up the generating function, it was actually an infinite series. Here, it is not an infinite series because we have definite restrictions imposed upon us. There can be no more than 100 chairs in a room. So here then, this describes a situation for a single room. There might be 20 chairs, or 40, or 60, or 80, or 100. Now, in some of the problems, again, when we were writing out the generating function, we started off with 1. Well, that's not the case here, because 1, of course, corresponds to x to the 0 exponent, which would mean receiving no chairs. But that's not true for this problem. Each room is going to have either 20, 40, 60, 80, or 100 chairs. So here is the generating function. And this describes now the situation for a single room. Now, for each room, of course, it has the identical function, room 1, 2, 3, 4, where each have the same generating function. But now when we consider all the rooms together, that would be this generating function times itself four times, or that's just this, raised to the fourth power. And what we're interested then is in the coefficient, when we do that, we're interested in determining the coefficient of x to the 200. Because then when we multiply all the generating functions together, that tells us then how many different ways those 200 chairs can be distributed along with, with this proviso here that they're being distributed in units of 20, 40, 60, 80, or 100 chairs in any room. So this is simple enough that we could just multiply this together by itself four times and then ask ourselves, when we do that, what's the coefficient of x to the 200? It would be a little tedious, but it, you know, it certainly is something that, if you were determined, you could handle it. But suppose that this was raised to the 400th power. Clearly, you don't want to multiply this together 400 times. Um, so the way that we handle that is similar to what we've done in the previous video, first of all, we realize, well, this is to the lowest exponent here in the entire sequence, so we can factor that out. 
So here we have x to the 20th times 1 plus x to the 20th. And we can just keep going like this then, plus x to the 40th plus x to the 60 plus x to the 80. And there it stops. And this is raised to the fourth power. So this is raised to the fourth power. And so is this, which gives us x to the 80. Now we said we're interested in the coefficient of x to the 200. That's what we want to find. What is that coefficient? Well, here we've already factored out x to the 80. So that means in this expression here, we have to find the coefficient of x to the 120. So this is multiplied together four times. What is the coefficient? of x to the 120. So that now becomes our problem. If this is multiplied together four times, what is the coefficient of x to the 120? And again, we could, if we would determine this, multiply it together four times and look for ourselves and determine what it is. Um, but again, if this is raised to a much higher exponent, then clearly that would not be the way to go. So the way that we handle this it's similar to what we did in the previous video. And we recall now that 1 over 1 minus x. Try to keep things in focus. Is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth plus x to the fifth, and so forth. It's an infinite series like this. Well, now, if instead, if we have 1 minus x to the 20th, then that gives us 1 plus x to the 20th, plus x to the 20th squared, so that's x to the 40th, plus x to the 20th cubed, that's x to the 60th, and this is 80, this is 100, this would be 120, and so forth like this. Okay, well, and this would be an infinite series like that. Now, where it gets interesting is if we ask ourselves, well, suppose we multiply both sides of this equation by, we want it to stop here. We want a finite sequence. So if we multiply both sides of the equation by 1 minus x to the hundredth power, multiply both sides of the equation by that. So here we multiply this side of the equation by that term. Now we have to multiply this side of the equation by that term. So let's see. We multiply this infinite series by 1. We're just going to get the same terms again. 1 plus x to the 20th plus x to the 40th and so forth like this plus x to the 100 plus x to the 120 and it goes on out to infinity. Now we multiply by minus x to the 100 times 1 gives us minus x to the 100. This times 20 gives us minus x to the 120. And as we keep going here all these higher terms cancel each other out. So what we have is this finite sequence. This is equal to 1 plus x to the 20 plus x to the 40 
plus x to the 60, and it stops at x to the 80. Now what we have up here is that finite sequence raised to the fourth power. So this expression raised to the fourth power will be this expression raised to the fourth, to the fourth power. And remember what we said, our goal initially was to find the coefficient of x to the 200. Here we have x to the 80 factored out. So in this expression, which is this one raised to the fourth power, we want to find the coefficient of x to the 120. So let's make some room and see if we can do that. And again, if these problems seem like they're rather tedious, again, that's just kind of the nature of dealing with generating functions. But it's well worth the effort because there's so many complicated problems that you can solve that without using generating functions, they'd be impossible. So here we have this raised to the fourth power. 1 minus x to the 100 divided by 1 minus x to the 20th. And we want the coefficient of x to the 120 now. Let's just write this here to remind ourselves. We want the coefficient of x to the 120. OK, now this, we can write this as 1 minus x to the 100 to the fourth power times this, 1 minus x to the 20th to the minus fourth power. Then at this point, what we do is we recall from our previous videos, well, first of all, Let's just emphasize now, we're going to multiply these two together. And of all the terms that we have, we're interested only in x to the 120th. We want to know what is that coefficient. All the other x's that would result from multiplying these two expressions together, we have no interest in. And now, here's where we use our knowledge of binomial expansions when we have a positive exponent or when we have a negative exponent. So with our work that we did in the previous videos, this is the finite sequence starting at i equals 0 to 4 of minus 1 to the i. And I like to write the binomial coefficients like this. Four i x to the 100 to the i power. So that's this written in terms of binomial expansion. Now this term written in terms of binomial expansion is going to be an infinite series from i equals 0 to infinity and this would be minus 1 to the i. And then here, the binomial coefficient is c i plus 3 over i x to the 20th to the i power. And again, how we've determined this, we've covered that in, in previous videos. So here now, we have these two things multiplied together. And this is an infinite series. This has four terms in the series. So if we multiply these together, needless to say, we're going to have an infinite number of, of terms. We're only interested in those terms that gives us x to the 120. All the other terms of the series, we have no interest in. We simply want to know, when we multiply these two together, what's going to be the coefficient of x to the 120. So we keep that in mind as we proceed along here. Uh, what is this? 
Let's just write out some of the terms from it then. I equals zero, that's one. And here we'll have x to the zero. So here we have c for zero. That's the first term. Then I equals one, because there's a negative sign here. C for one times x to the hundredth. Now remember what we're doing, we're going to take these terms and multiply by terms from this over here. And we're interested in when we get x to the 120. All the other terms we don't care about. Well, we want to keep that in mind because with the next term, i is going to equal 2. That's going to be x to the 200. Well, that's past x to the 120. Whenever I multiply it by something over here, it's going to get even larger than x to the 200. Those terms have no interest to us whatsoever. So from this right here, we're only interested in these first two terms right here, because afterwards we get beyond x to the 120 power. This is just 1. And this is just 4. So 1 minus 4 times x to the 100. And like I said, the next term here is going to be x to the 200th power. We're only interested in x to the 120. And we're going to be multiplying this by terms from over here from this expression. So we would even bother to write down those other terms there. Now, I think what we're going to do is we're almost at the end of the problem, so don't get impatient with this. But I think just so that we don't rush through things and... Um, probably make some kind of stupid mistake along the way. Let's stop the video right here at this point. What we're going to do in the next video is we're going to pick up from here and we're going to ask ourselves, well, what value does these x's have to have? So that I multiply by what's over here, those exponents add up to give us x to the 120. All the other terms that are that result from multiplying these two together, we don't care about those. We're only interested in hunting down, if you will, those terms that involve x to the 120, so you can figure out what is that coefficient going to be. So that's what we're going to do when we come back with the next video. And it shouldn't take us very long, so come back and join us, and let's see if we can get this problem wrapped up.